A very good evening to all of you. So now we will discuss about tonsillitis. That is the infection of the tonsillar tissue. See, tonsillitis of acute nature or chronic nature. So the most common organism responsible for the tonsillitis is hemolytic streptococcus. So hemolytic streptococcus is most common organism responsible for the tonsillitis. Try to remember in the ear infection or ASOM or CSOM, the most common bacteria involved is streptococcus pneumoniae, whereas in tonsillitis it is hemolytic streptococcus. So mainly tonsillitis occurred in the school going children or we can say children aged between like 3 to 15 years, somewhat like that. It can also affect to adults also, but rare in infants or uh, age group of above than 50 years. So what will be the symptoms of the tonsillitis? Firstly, there will be throat pain, painful swallowing, some sort of foreign body sensation in the pain, throat, and there, there may be referred pain in the ear. And what else? The fever if the septicemia occurs to the patient. So child may have fever or somewhere dull appearance. So look at this diagram. It is showing this tonsillitis. You can see this is my tonsillar tissue with the lots of whitish uh, dots like there, which is suggesting of the folliculitis. Okay, so this whenever there is a tonsillitis, so what happens is throat redness will be there with the hyperemia or the congestion of the anterior pillar or the uvula or the part of the soft palate. So throat redness will be there with the hyperemia of the soft palate, uvula or the anterior pillar. And sometimes this jugular digastric node, which is the main lymphatic drainage of the tonsillar tissue, may be enlarged. So we can palpate this jugular digastric nodes in the baby or the children affected with the tonsillitis. So what are the type of the tonsillitis? The first is acute superficial tonsillitis where the superficial layer of the tonsillar tissue is severely inflamed. So you can see in this diagram this complete red, red uvula, red anterior pillar, congested tonsils. So this is a picture of the acute superficial tonsillitis. Then comes the acute parenchymal tonsillitis. What do you mean by parenchyma? That is a complete tissue of the tonsil. So in acute parenchyma and tonsillitis, as you can see in the diagram, this tonsillar tissue is enlarged and inflamed or swollen. The third type is acute follicular tonsillitis. We, are, no, we know about that tonsillar tissue is having crypts. So, so what happens, the pus or the bacteria invasion and the collection of the uh, pus point or we can say the degraded material will be in this follicle leading to appearance known as acute follicular tonsillitis. As you can see the whitish, all the follicles are filled with this mucopus. So this is acute follicular tonsillitis. Then last one is the acute membranous tonsillitis where is a whitish dirty white or curdy white membrane will be present over the tonsils with the inflammation of the tonsillar tissue. We all know that membranous tonsillitis may happen in first in diphtheria. Then comes the candidiasis. Candidiasis typically given the dirty white appearance. Then there are other diseases also like the infectious mononucleosis. We will discuss in this slide. Now what is the treatment? The first treatment will about for the child is firstly give the analgesic. The advise the baby to go for the little bit of rest that is a bed rest then plenty of the fluids and give the antibiotics analgesics and we can uh, suggest the patient to do the gargles with the beta bean and there are other sorts available in the market. What can be the complication of acute tonsillitis? Firstly is a chronic tonsillitis that means a repeated or chronic infection of the tonsillar tissue. Then what else? Then maybe the paratonsillar abscess that is the abscess uh, in the uh, tonsillar bed or we can say space beneath the tonsillar tissue. Then there may happen the parapharyngeal abscess, cervical abscess because of the involvement of this jugular digastric nodes. If this jugular digastric node becomes prominent, sometimes the abscess occur there presenting as a neck abscess. And there will be referred pain and sometimes because of the tonsillar infection, infection may ascend through the eustachian tube into the ear. So leading to the acute otitis media. Then what are the other complications? Like rheumatic fever, acute glomerulonephritis or subacute bacterial endocarditis. Now let's talk about chronic tonsillitis. That means the chronic infection of the tonsillar tissue. Maybe because of infection from the teeth, maybe because of infection from the nose or the pharynx or the larynx or some other way. But if tonsils is continuous 
continuously or repeatedly infected, the, it is known as chronic tonsillitis. So, how what will be the clinical feature? There will be repeated attack of sore throat. Second, there will be throat irritation and the retching sensation in the throat leading to coughing, leading to some foreign body sensation in the throat. Taste will be altered. There will be bad taste in the mouth. And sometimes tonsils are so enlarged, they will cause difficulty in speech or difficulty in swelling. Because whenever patient is trying to swallow the food, so it will touch around the tonsillar tissue, causing the pain or some sort of discomfort to the child or the affected patient. What are the types of the chronic tonsillitis? Firstly is the chronic follicular tonsillitis or chronic parenchymatous tonsillitis. We have seen in the diagram in the previous slides how the follicular tonsillitis or the parenchymatous tonsillitis will look like. Okay. Now, what will happen? Whenever this uh, there is chronic tonsillitis, so these tonsils will have some yellow pus discharge or whitish, dirty whitish collection of the material in their follicles or over the uh, superficial layer of the tonsils. And there may be the enlarged jugular digestic nodes. And sometimes if we apply the pressure over the tonsillar tissue, some cheesy white material on some sort of pus will come out. This sign is known as Irwin Mure sign. Sometimes there is tonsillolith because the food will get accumulated in these creeps. So when our patient will come with a complaint of like some vitus discharge is there from the tonsillar tissue and patient what he do? He himself try to press that tonsillar tissue. So this is somewhat known as Irwin Mure sign. And there will be fusion of anterior pillar if tonsils are inflamed. You can differentiate uh, where the uh, anterior pillar and where is the capsule of the tonsil. Now, what is the differential diagnosis over the membrane of the tonsil? We have already discussed. First one is a membranous tonsillitis, then comes the diphtheria. So we are already giving the vaccination for the diphtheria, but still some patients, uh, some babies may have diphtheria presenting with a dirty white membrane over the tonsillitis, over the tonsillar tissue. And what is the typical of diphtheria? Whenever we try to rub the membrane, so it will bleed. Whereas in candidiasis, the, suppose a patient is having candidiasis, so there will be layer of the tonsils. But if you try to rub the layer, so the whitish layer will get separated without any bleeding. And then comes the Vincent enzyma, where there is a black colored patch over the tonsillar tissue. And what are the other diseases like infectious mononucleosis, a granulocytosis, leukemia, some sort of aphthous ulcer sometimes because in aphthous ulcer we know whitish, whitish, whitish structure or dots like structure are present. And then come malignancy of the tonsils also and then maybe trauma or candidal infection we have already discussed. Now what are the indication of the tonsillectomy? Again, this is important for the examination point of view. The absolute indication where we have to do the surgery, the first one is uh, peritonsillar abscess. If there is an abscess around the tonsillar tissue or in the tonsillar bed, so firstly we will prescribe the antibiotic to subside or reduce the inflammation of the abscess. Then after four to six weeks of that peritonsillar abscess or quincy, we will advise the patient for tonsillectomy. So it is an absolute contra, uh, absolute indication for the tonsillectomy. Then recurrent infection of the throat or we can say over the tonsils. If patient is having like episodes, seven episodes or more than that in a year or consecutively two years, patient is having more than five episodes. Okay. Or suppose three episodes per year for con consecutive three years. If patient is having so many of episodes, so according to World Health Organization guidelines, so we should advise the patient for the tonsillectomy and it is considered absolute indication. Then what are the other absolute indication? Suppose because of the uh, tonsillitis, patient or the baby is having febrile scissors. So then we have to do the tonsillectomy. Then come if tonsils are so much of a large that they, they are causing the difficulty or painful swallowing, if the speech is altered, patient can't breathe properly or can't talk properly because of the enlarged tonsils, then also it's an absolute indication for the tonsillectomy. And suppose if we doubt there is a, some malignancy in the tonsils. So again, they have to do the tonsillectomy. Generally, in the tonsillectomy, uh, tonsils malignancy, patient will present with the unilateral or one-sided enlargement of Tonsil. So if any adult present with unilateral enlargement of the tonsil, we should think of malignancy. What are the relative indications? Firstly, the diphtheria carriers who are not responding to the antibiotics. Then comes a streptococcal infection carrier. And then comes a chronic tonsillitis, the altering the taste of the patient or the bad taste or some foul smell in the uh, mouth. And then repeated infection uh, in the tonsils. 
and as a part of the another operation also we can do the tonsillectomy like uh, if we do the styloid process and large styloid uh, removal so we can go go through the entire approach what we'll do we will remove the tonsils uh, explore the tonsillar bed and we will locate the styloid process and remove it and what are the other surgeries like palato pharyngoplasty used uh, done in the sleep apnea surgery so in that and again the glossopharyngeal pharyngeal neurectomy suppose patient is having pain continuous pain pain in the area supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve so to do the neurectomy we have to explore firstly the tonsil and then reach till the level of the glossopharyngeal nerve and uh, do the neurectomy and what are the contraindication of the tonsillectomy the first contraindication is the polio it has been asked multiple times in the exam why polio because we all know the glossopharyngeal nerve lies in the bed of the tonsil if we remove the tonsil so it will come in direct exposure whatever we are eating or any sort of pathogens we are inhaling or ingesting directly can affect the glossopharyngeal nerve so firstly the polio next one is acute infection because if it if we do the surgery in the acute infection it will be lots of bleeding and some sort of tragedy will happen while doing the surgery then again other in contraindication is sub mucus cleft palate see baby is already having cleft palate that means it is also already having the uh, the problem of regurgitation that is nasal regurgitation patient will complain of the whatever he or she is eating will comes into the nose so again if you remove the tonsils again this area will broaden up the open palate area will be broaden up so it will further lead to more complication so this is an absolute contraindication the cleft palate submucous is an absolute contraindication for tonsillectomy then babies age age less than 3 years you shouldn't go for the tonsillectomy and suppose patient is having some uti or some other septicemia or some other infection in the body then again we have to wait and uh, don't do tonsillectomy at the same time what is the position of the tonsillectomy that is a rose position how it happens in rose position what we do we just lie down the patient in the supine position i'll put a shoulder back beneath the shoulders so that neck will be extended so that is known as a rose position and what are the methods of the tonsillectomy cold methods are like we can do by the knife and gradually dissect it or we can use a harmonic scalpel or cryotherapy hot methods are like the cautery laser or coblation coblator is there lots of facilities are nowadays available in the hospitals so new advances are there so we can do tonsillectomy by means of coblator or laser what are the complication the first complication is the bleeding while doing the surgery if the bleeding occur that is known as the primary hemorrhage so if any injury to vessel there will be bleeding so what we have to do we have to ligate that vessel and there is reactionary hemorrhage also in reactionary hemorrhage generally bleeding occurs within 24 hours like within one day why this occur may mostly because of slippage of the ligature suppose we have ligated the vessel and in the meantime after 3 to 4 hours there is a slippage of the ligature again leading to the bleeding that is known as reactionary bleeding then comes a secondary hemorrhage or secondary bleeding it usually happens because of the infection in the tonsillary tissue again on some sort of trauma again after 3 to 4 days or 4 to 5 days suppose so what we do if is because of the infection what we'll do we will give the iv antibiotics now what is the vein that is most commonly injured that is the peritonsillar vein we try to remember beneath the capsule there was a vein which is running so that is a peritonsillar vein or peritonsillar vein so that is the most common vein which is being uh, injured while doing the surgery and arterial uh, the arterial bleeding is there that is mainly because of the facial artery branch that is the tonsillar branch now there is a one sign grisel sign so this uh, it has been asked in the exam what is a grisel sign while doing the surgery Uh, we put the patient in the rose position so what we do we, we extend the neck so sometime post surgery patient will complain of the pain in the neck because of over extension of the neck which will lead to some pain at the c1 or c2 level so this is known as grisel sign so i hope you got it thank you